the cemetery. Behind its discreet neighbourhood walls appears was one of the strange and last shelters of dreams and illusions, of that which is different and unknown, of that which is extraordinary and magic. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Grey Visitations here. So today I'm in Mayglass Old Church Ruin, as you can see just there behind me in the background, in Wexford. And we're here to have a look at the old graves and we'll read a number of inscriptions. And a couple of new ones, um, I'll go around and read a few new ones also and kind of mix it up a bit today. And uh, there's a couple of tragic stories involved in these old graves. So this is May Glass. The newer section is here on your right as you come in the gate. And uh, we have that beautiful crucifixion scene there as you come in to the old graveyard. So we'll just read a couple of these headstones. The first one here we see is Paddy, also known as Patrick Murphy, who was born in 1941 and died in 2019, aged 78 years old, and a nice Irish flag in the corner of the gravesite. Beautiful grave here. I believe this man was a in the Irish army a veteran in loving memory of Peter Hughes formerly May Glass who died on the 11th of May 2022 aged 78 years old sadly missed by his loving daughter and a number of his family So we can just see a photograph there of Peter with all his military medals, Irish Defence Forces veteran. Beautiful photo and a laser picture that's lasered here onto this granite slab here of Peter also. And a lovely little dog here. And fishing. I'm sure Peter loved his fishing. So the beautiful grave, lovely flowers on it. Now there is a bit of a story to this grave, guys. So um, I just said I'd add it in. Apparently I was speaking to a local um, one day, a woman, and she was telling me that Peter lost one of his legs and um, it's a strange story but his leg was actually buried here at the grave and he wanted his leg to be buried here in the grave so that was done first his leg was buried here at the grave site there was no name no date of death or nothing at the time Peter was still alive um, his leg was buried here and sadly Peter passed away recently in May 2022 so Peter is buried here but just said I'd add that in to the video another gorgeous grave here we have a metal kind of design plate here of a fox and it's the grave of Dylan Boggan. Dylan died tragically after working in a stables with horses when one of the horses kicked out at Dylan and Dylan unfortunately passed away from his injuries. 
Dylan was only 23 years old when he passed away. He was a bright young man who had his whole life ahead of him. Rest in peace, Dylan. He was there underneath and I'm not sure why they're there, but I think he might be involved in some kind of a, a hunting club maybe or something like that. And we see this gorgeous horse's head here made of wood. Two small little foxes just there. Beautiful grave covered in flowers. In loving memory of Dylan Boggan, who was born in 1998 and passed away in 2021. And a beautiful headstone with that tree and those branches coming down over the headstone and the leaves on them. Really, really nice. Sad to see the children's graves here. And in this one here, we have baby Holly O'Byrne who passed away in 2015. And also baby Emily O'Byrne who passed away in May. 2017 sweet dreams love mammy and daddy and lovely flowers on the grave so rest in peace little angels so on my way up to the the graveyard today I was cycling up on my bike and you know on my journeys I often come across people you know who I get to maybe luckily get to speak to on my journeys and strangely enough today I was cycling up here to do the video and I met a man actually cycling on a bike also so I was just asking him which direction Um, what direction the graveyard was so he told me which way to come to the old graveyard here and I told him where I was going and he said I have two brothers who are buried there who died in 1992 and uh, sadly he lost his two brothers over a tragic accident so I said, while I'm here today, I'm going to remember his two brothers and also visit their final resting place. And um, the Casey brothers are just buried here at this grave. So in loving memory of Brendan Casey, May Glass, who died on the 8th of April, 1992, aged 19 years old and his brother Edward died the 11th of April 1992 aged 21 years old who both died following an accident so unfortunately Brendan passed away on the 8th of April and his brother Edward passed away three days later following those horrendous injuries I'm sure and the Casey brothers were coming back I believe from talking to his brother they were coming back from football training and they were on a motorbike and tragically came around a corner and ran into a truck and the two brothers were killed so very very sad and very very tragic so rest in peace to the Casey brothers. So when you're on your journey, sometimes, you know, um, you hear stories and I've heard another story actually about a woman that's buried just over here. 
And whether it is true to, or not to the story, I'm not quite sure. But I have heard that the woman that's buried here at this grave, and we'll read the inscription there now. To the memory of Doris Helena Mottershall, who died the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, 1980, aged 87 years old. And the reason behind this story is because, as you can see on the inscription here, it says, Farewell Monty and Sean from Aunt Liz. Now, from what I can gather, Monty and Sean were dogs. So the story goes that the woman here, Doris, wanted to be buried at sea. So, the, you know, she wanted to be buried out at sea, so she got a group of people, I think, and they brought her coffin out to sea. From what I hear, and don't quote me on it because I'm not sure, but they brought her coffin out to sea and put a number of batteries, car batteries and stuff like that, inside the coffin to put weight inside the coffin so the coffin would sink to the seabed and she would be buried at sea. But for some strange reason, it didn't work out, the plan didn't work. So she's buried here. And uh, just to add on to the story, I believe she's also buried with her dog here. And that would be Monty. And I'm not sure about the Sean, but I know Monty was her dog. So, just something to tell you about that story. An unusual story, a woman that's buried with her dog and who wanted to be buried at sea also. So rest in peace, Doris. Very interesting story. Right, so we're going to go around the old graveyard here and read some of the older ones, the older section. It's just in the back there. We have a lovely old iron headstone here. And I don't see an inscription on that. But well, there we have those wild weeds growing again from the grave, as we've seen on the last video. Quite large ones here, look at that. Very, very tall. They actually grow those weeds. And just here we can see, and I have brought my torch today, so we'll have a look here. You can just see there's an old tree just there, and it's gone right up through the stone wall here. And it has split all that wall from bottom to top. So it'll show you the power of nature and trees, the damage they can do. So there's the old church rune and up the very top there you could see it's a double bell tower all the ivy on it so we're going to read a couple of the old graves on our journey and then this one here it says here lies the body of William Devereux who died in 1761, aged 17 years old. So another 1700s old headstone. Only 17 years old, so rest in peace. So 
So I do want to show you, there's a beautiful old door, arched door here that was part of the old original church. And a number of graves in the old graveyard here. So as you can see, this is fenced off here all the way around. So it's not possible to get inside the old church ruin area. Fallen debris and fallen stone, I'd imagine, you know, it's not safe to go in there. So they're probably doing this up. I'm sure it'll look lovely when it's finished. Spectacular looking church. And there is some graves on the other side of that fence just in there. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Wexford today. Blessed with the sun and the weather. Here lies the body of Mary, or sorry, Mr. James Sinnott, who departed this life in January. And there's a daddy long legs just landed on the date when I was reading. So there you go, guys, 1776, aged. 86 years old so what a super age to live till 86 years old back in 1776 and not many people lived very long back in the 1700s so that's amazing we have an old railed wrought iron one here more of these super designs look at that beautiful And some of these have gates on them. You can just see some of that has actually fallen there. Not very, it's not very good. And there's the old graves inside. Now I can't see any inscription on those. They've faded away. Beautiful high Celtic cross. Pray for the souls of Nicholas Brown, who died the 24th of July, 1861, and of his wife, Ellen Brown, who died February, 1898, and his sister, Mary Brown, who died in 1875. And then you have Michael Brown who died in 1892 a beautiful Celtic cross and just beside that Celtic cross look at this headstone amazing detail and stonework on this you see the flowers here a cross here in the middle all that orange lichen of your charity, pray for the repose of the soul of Nicholas Brown. So it must be another Brown family member buried beside the Celtic Cross who died in 1880, 1861, sorry, aged 65 years old. And his sister Mary Brown, who died in 1875, aged 83 years old. Just look at that old headstone, isn't that beautiful? Some beautiful old headstones here from the 1700s, 1800s. And I haven't done the old ones for a while, so I want to show you guys the old ones. So I'm happy to be here today to show you these. Erected to the memory of John Stafford, age 53. Mary, aged 58, James, aged 61, and Clement, 
Prendergast, who died May the 22nd, 1941, aged eight years old. So there, I've never seen that before on the headstones. You just have in memory of all the names and their ages are all down along. But usually you'd see a date of when they died, but there's no dates on this. Just their name and their age, which is unusual. I haven't seen that before on my travels. Some more beautiful headstones there. Joseph William Smith, 1937, age 74 years old. I love these old graveyards. They're, they're full of history and they're, you know, it's a peaceful place to come to stroll around and remember all these people that are buried here and read their names out loud once again. Two small crosses just here. And it looks like there was a picture in there of Jesus with the crown of thorns and a little statue that was put inside there. And you have all that orange lichen. There's that little statue and the second one here. So there are two identical looking stone crosses here. So I imagine they're family members. Here we have the final resting place of Patrick Sinnott, who died the 18th of December 1950, aged 56 years old, or maybe it could be 66, it's kind of faded. And then you have John Sinnott, who died aged 80 years old. And a beautiful face of Jesus with the crown of thorns there. So this is the old graveyard here, May Glass. You can just see all the, the overgrowth and some of the headstones are covered over like this one here completely covered over unfortunately and you need something to cut that out so it can be seen again and maybe I'll come back here and return again someday soon and get like a hedge clippers or something like that and I can try and cut all those old thorns and overgrowth away from the headstone so it can be seen again Another old grave here, stone slab, and then you have the headstone. And just this graveyard looks down onto those fields with all those lovely sheep. And they can hear me. So hello back. <laughs> so here on this slab we have here lies the body of Mary Kelly, who died in 1828, and also the body of her husband, I'd imagine. Dial is the name. 1835, and it's kind of covered in. Her husband actually is there April the 17th, 1870. And a number of names. We'll just read this headstone here also. It says, lies the body of Michael Dial, who passed away on June the 13th, 1798. So there's the 1798 guys, the year of the rebellion here. 
in Ireland, aged 47 years old. And there's a John here who died in 1796, aged only six years old. So who knows, guys, if that man passed away and was involved in the rebellion and could have died at war. So if that's the case, rest in peace and thank you for your service, which I'm not sure of, but I'll say it anyway. And rest in peace to the Dial family. Two stone crosses here at this one with no inscriptions. Just at the very, very corner, as you can see down that big hill there of the, the old graveyard. Beautiful scenery here and very serene. So we'll see, can we read some more inscriptions? And this looks like a priest here or a reverend. You just see that cross there. Reverend Peter Sinnott, parish priest, Ballymore. And that's all it says on it, which is strange. There's no year of death or age or anything like that I don't see on the headstone. It's something different. I haven't seen that before. I don't know why they never put a date of death or uh, an age on it. So I'm right on the edge of the hillside here in the old graveyard. Another old wrought iron grave here. Here lies the body of Joseph O'Brien, who died in 1815, it looks like, age 78 years old. Some tombs here. And it has split in the middle, you can see there. And you can just see what it's inside there. And it's not a skull, I actually thought that was a skull inside. But it seems to be just a stone. So they're packed in with a load of stone. Um, I've seen the way they've been made actually, the ones that go under the ground. They're, um, Packed with straw, I think, and stone. Those old chest tombs. Another old one here. Here lies the body of Patrick Brown, who departed this life April the 16th, 1791, aged 74 years old. So a load of old headstones around this old graveyard. And I'm going to take you over now to the other section of the graveyard. And there's a couple of graves around there I want to show you. As I was coming in, I spotted. So there's that beautiful old church ruin. And that gorgeous doorway. It almost looks like Roman style. That doorway, look at that. Another part of the old church, just there. So I'm going to go back out this direction 
and show you the old graves just inside this old brick doorway entrance and uh, that was actually the tree I was showing you earlier in the video that um, has gone up through the old wall just over there in that corner you see the old tree that has gone right up through that wall and split the whole wall so now we have an old another wrought iron railing around this grave and it's all in here in its own and I think there's one or two other ones up again there's one against the wall there's also another one behind me here as you come inside so we'll read the names on these if we can So here lies the body of John Harvey of Bargy Castle. So that's one of the Harveys of Bargy Castle. And as we know, Bagnell Harvey was involved in the 1798, the famous leader in the rebellion. So John Harvey, I'm not sure, could be his father. In the county of Wexford, Esquire, who died on the fourth day of June, 1834. In private life, he was distinguished for punctuous sense of honour and integrity, and in his dome relations his character was marked by every quality that could endear him to his family and his friends aged 76 years old and you can just see there he was the honorable sorry he was the noblest work of God and honest man it says so that's a beautiful inscription on the old tomb there of John Harvey so I'll make my way back out this way and we'll try and read this one here sponge is stuck here we can read this old one here here lies the body of it looks like William Restrick, a faithful servant to Mr. Harvey's family for 64 years. He died the 6th of September. 1820, 1821 in his 87th year this stone is erected by Mr. John Harvey to his memory so there we have another interesting find guys the old headstone there a faithful servant to this man here Mr. John Harvey the Esquire so the Harvey family had servants and at Bargy Castle and this man here William was a faithful servant for a number of years maybe six decades or more so that's a really long time to be a servant and serve the Harvey family and it was very nice of them to bury the servant in the same area here as the Harvey family
So rest in peace. And we can actually see here the old crypt. There's an old crypt in there, guys, and uh, it's not possible to get behind those bars to see, but you can just see this, the brickwork there inside that hole is the old crypt of John Harvey. Another interesting find. Now there is one here also, so I'm going to read it, if I can. John Harvey. In 1794, aged 80 years old, I think, so he's another one of the Harveys that's buried in here, that's belonged to the Harvey family. So rest in peace to the Harvey family. There's a lovely grave over here sitting on the hillside painted white in loving memory of Frank Murphy who died in 1968 and his granddaughter Sarah died in 1992 lovely flowers on it and just down there you can see the old gate so that would have been the original gate the gateway into the old graveyard here back in the day and people would have went up along that hill there and over to the old church to go to mass here lies the body of Bridget, I think, Roach, who departed this life in 1784, aged 30 years old. Here lies the body of Patrick French, an unusual name, French. Who departed this life in 1791 aged you can kind of see there guys 43 years old it looks like in 1791 amazing old gravestones another one here with the white lichen on it matthew conic who departed this life and you can just see 1777 and the age is hard to see on that but another 1700s grave another beautiful one here look at that the sun the crucifixion scene we can barely see some of the stonework there, there's the moon. So we have the sun, the moon, and the stars. Here lies the body of Dennis Kelly, who departed this life December 1791, aged 73 years old. Another old 1700s one. And I love finding all those old 1700s graves. And they're still surviving the inscription on them some of them have fallen over here sad to see probably no family left anymore to come and fix it up and you know
more old ones here. Here lies the body of John Cardiff, who departed this life on the 4th of February, 1791, age 86. Also, Anne Cardiff Dyle, who died in 1782, age 76. And her son James is buried here also. And he died in 1795, age 59 years old. So the Cardiff family passed away back in the 17. Hundreds. So you can hear the machinery in the background. Farmers are at work today. It's a beautiful day for it. And here's a name. Here lies the body of Catherine Cousins. Sinnott, who departed this life on the 27th of October, 1827. And I don't see an age on that, unless it's faded away. And also the body of her husband, Nicholas Cousins, who departed this life in March, 1835. And their son, Lawrence, is also buried there. He passed away in 1845, aged 48 years old. So Catherine Cousins is the name on this headstone. And I actually have a, a follower and a subscriber of mine on the channel, Cathy Cousins. And so Cathy, if you're watching this, who knows, you could be related to these people here with the same namesake, Catherine Cousins. Very interesting. So on that note, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here today on this warm, sunny day. And it's been a pleasure to walk around this old graveyard here and read some of these headstones and see this beautiful church ruin and all it has to offer in Mayglass Old Graveyard. So for me here, guys, grave visitations. Thanks for coming along um, on this wonderful walk today um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so until then i will see you on my next adventure take care guys god bless